Okay, you, 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 you seem to be clear. Yeah, yes, yes. hang on, hang on. I think we have to be fair. You know, fair is fair. Mm -hmm. um, as Honorable uh, Dugua said, the bill has not even left the National Assembly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, doing the said it to Allah Shadura, you know, uh, please, we need to just be fair. Well, we need to be fair. Um, you know, uh, he's been in the, Senate, in the National Assembly for a long time. Mm -hmm. Was actually there in the Third Republic. Yes. Right? Uh, we, we were colleagues, old, yes. uh, were colleagues uh, in, the, in the Senate, Senate President's, President's office. office. Yes. So, you know, let the, when the National Assembly people finish their work, yeah. When they finish, there are some administrative things to be done. Absolutely. That the, 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 the bureaucrats, the National Assembly, mm. the bills office, the legal department, the legal department they yeah. have to go through and make sure that everything is in order. Yes. It doesn't contradict other laws. Yes. Right? Yes. So it's when they have done that, yes. and it's now transmitted to the president, mm. that you can now begin the countdown. And by the way, when you transmit it to the president, it doesn't mean that anything that is transmitted to the president even when they campaign about it, that he has to sign. He has okay. a number of options. Be be mm. Before we go into yeah. that, that let me bring why... in, I want to bring in Israel quickly. Mm. I mean, clearly from the, the, the sort of tone of this conversation and the way mm. things are going, you, there seems to be a sense of frustration. Exactly. Understandably so, if you consider how many years exactly. Nigeria has been trying to get a PIB bill of some sort together. Mm -hmm. what, what are your views regarding the fact that there seems to be some sort of sense of urgency now. It's like we've started something, but the time is very limited. And that's probably where I think we should be focusing our messaging, right? Exactly. Yeah, and, and with the greatest respect, I understand what uh, the good reverend is saying uh, with respect to perhaps the body language and the energy levels that have been shown by the executive arm of government. But until the bill, as it were, is transmitted, to that arm of the government because this is a, a private member bill at the end of the day. Exactly. And, the, and what I understand the executive did in order not to disrupt the process was to in fact withdraw their own bill because they were going to push a bill and those were some of the things that created the hiatus in the previous assemblies because you had multiple bills being considered in the assembly. So perhaps we can give them the benefit of the doubt exactly. that they showed some good faith yes. in not pursuing their own bill yes. and waiting for the legislature. Uh, the private member yes, bill. The now it has okay, been sir, passed, sir, there was an intervening break, so let us give them the benefit of the doubt that within another week or two it is going to be transmitted. When it gets to the office of the president, then the president would respond in one of the two ways that is available for the president to, to respond. Okay. Now, for consent the, yeah. or come back with a pushback. Right. Now, for those um, people watching at home, you can um, join our conversation and our social media handles and the hashtags are all showing on the screen at the moment. So please send your comments. We'll do our best to involve you in the conversation as well as the studio audience. Okay, now that we've had a bit of a robust conversation about uh, the PIGB bill, and I still want us at the end to sort of try and summarize what it would mean in practical terms, I want us to move on to the next stage. Realistically, can this National Assembly, and this is directed at you, look at the three remaining bills, pass them, harmonize them before their tenure ends in 2019? Uh, like I've said, uh, we have come up with a lot of approaches, and uh, one of which, like I said, is unprecedented. So many other things we have taken in the light of ambitiously pursuing these laws, these bills. One of which is for the two chambers. Of course, the National Assembly is like a twin chambers, uh, assembly, uh, legislature. Uh, for the first time, in order to express our commitment towards really actualizing the PIB, for the first, in the first, in the, uh, for the first time in the history of the National Assembly, the two PIB committees are now merged as one. Of course, with the leave of the chairman of the National Assembly, who is the president of the Senate, allowing us to work together, which by, by this process is like we have even bypassed so many other legislative processes of maybe operating on one hand, coming to harmonize at another Still, level. Still, the so first bill has taken you three years. Three. And so the question is, will you be able to do one, two, three, or any of the other three bills I, I think in I, the next few months? I think to answer you straight, I would like to say uh, optimistically, yes. 
Don't okay, so there's an intention to, to absolutely, absolutely. The commitment is there, the political commitment is there, and the legislative zeal among members of the National Assembly to really make it right is also there. And the, the leadership of the National Assembly is also so much committed towards really actualizing this uh, objective mm -hmm. because the intention is to make sure that we have come up with this reform and it's going to be a credit to the National Assembly, especially the eight. Uh, National Assembly that is being led by the Senate President, Senator Bukola Saraki. And like I said, trying to avoid some of these uh, uh, delayed processes, we have now agreed to now work as one joint committee on petroleum industry deal, which has never happened. Okay. So working together now will take away so many procedures that would have been taken at the level of the House of Representatives as a chamber, and the Senate taking its own position also as a chamber and coming to harmonize. All these processes will be cut down. And remember, these are these are bills that used to be one, like I said, the omnibus PIB, it's been on and they are interconnected. Okay. So passing I, I the PIGB to, yeah. is like setting the framework, setting the face for all other bills to also trail the same way. I want to assure you we have every commitment to really pass the remaining three bills within the shortest period of time. Okay, before you start um, electioneering. For... Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Electioneering would not stop that at all. Okay, I want to quickly see if I can bring in members of the audience um, to sort of chip in on some of the conversation that we've been having before we go for a break. The, the gentleman in the blue shirt over here. Sam. Yes, Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Sam Amade. I used to chair the Nigerian Tis Regulatory Commission. I, I think uh, to pick up for the anxiety in the question you asked on whether the National Assembly could uh, Ramp up, ramp up the order before a uh, close of, uh, of session. I, and I, uh, I do quite rightly say that we can. But essential, I think, the real problem is if you look at the history of this bill, the, the, the lockup was at the stage of the fiscal regime and the community uh, side of it, which essentially, because of the special interests, especially because of the contending forces, uh, the operators have some that amounted to them like a incentive for investment, uh, massive transaction, and the community. Okay. I, I'm going to have to interrupt you. I will allow you to finish when we come back from this break. Thank you. So just please bear with me. Don't go away. <laughs> 